you by the way, Kid Dig by here, and I gotta tell you, I am angry. I am one angry Eagles fan. I am one angry fat mother humping Eagles fan right now. I'm pissed off. Are you really gonna tell me that this team was ten and one, two games up? on the conference for first place after 11 games after 32 straight weeks in first place you're going to tell me that this team collapsed the way they did and they only finished with 11 wins are you going to really tell me that you got to be kidding me the most epic utterly ridiculous collapse in the history of sports there is no doubt in my mind 15 years from now 10 years from now hell maybe five years from now you're gonna see espn 30 for 30 the collapse nfl network special presents the collapse they're gonna make documentaries about it they're gonna make movies about it they're gonna make everything about it this is unprecedented and i'm pissed off i'm pissed because why I still have to go through one more game of this shit. You gotta be kidding me. Now, let me get a few things out of the way. I had this. Oh boy. I'm just gonna sit here and enjoy the music. Here we go. The coffee. Tastes that much stronger. Mm. The air feels that much crisper. Mm. Hello, good people. And I would say Eagle fans, but they don't come around anymore. They show Joe Boo Sports Report no love. And I dare say that it's going to be a quiet offseason because Eagle fans have literally crashed and burned. And Philly 500, I'm telling you, bro, it's the Kelly Greens, man. It's the Kelly Greens. So let me start this morning off with a great hello to everybody. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you, my people. Thank you for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here and let's wake up the football gods. Man, my voice is a little bit hoarse today from yelling out there at FedEx Field. I, my body is sore. I feel like I played in the game. We ended up, it, it was a lot of work, y'all. It was, I, I've been training all off season to get to what we had yesterday, which was seeing the Dallas Cowboys live and in person end up winning the NFC East crown enacting revenge on Sam Howell, who was howling <laughs> ooh, 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 all night. Seeing my quarterback, Dak Prescott, literally, finally shutting up these haters. Oh, no, it won't shut them up because they know, they know he makes their ass rich by talking about it, by trashing him, by trying to sully his name. And that shit is wrong, but it's okay. Because my quarterback with a psychology degree just brushed that shit off and says, you know what? You just can't stop talking about me. <laughs> and in the end, as everybody knows, everybody knows when it comes to the media, it doesn't matter if they like you or hate you, but that they're talking about you. They can't get you off their tongue. You're in their head. Even though jackasses out there can take numbers and skew them any, any way we want. We often can take numbers and we'll, we'll fit them into the narrative that we want to try and paint. And I probably am guilty of this. Yes. Now, I want you to try and 
spin the shit that what Dak Prescott, because this is the travesty right here. I'm going to say right here, right now. There are 50 sports writers at the end of the regular season. There's 50 guys before the playoffs that vote on who should be the league MVP. Now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say Dak Prescott deserves to be the league MVP. Haters out there, I don't, kiss my ass. Kiss my high yellow ass. Let's take a look at these numbers. Total yards. And I want you to keep in mind something right here. I want you to keep in mind something right here. Because, see, Dak Prescott doesn't finish the games. How many games could Dak Prescott have been padding the numbers, but he was out in the fourth quarter? Like six, seven? He was out early yesterday. Cooper Rush was in. I'm sure Skip Bayless, the man who literally wanted to have Trey Lance play this year, and Cooper Rush, and said he does not trust Dak Prescott. Well, we don't trust you, Skip. We don't trust your ass. You flip-flop more than a damn fish that's out of water. I don't want to hear this stuff about your Dallas Cowboys, because, you know, if you were actually a real fan, if you were actually a real fan, guess what? We might see your ass at training camp. We might actually see you at a Cowboys game. As opposed to seeing your ass at your house doing your little stupid shimmy or throwing jerseys in the trash. You are just like the rest of those mother humpers out there using Dak Prescott to make yourself know or talked about. I don't care what you want to call it. But here's the thing. I know everybody says Lamar Jackson I'm going to ask you this, because I know I, I know we've heard people say that uh, I, I don't remember which jackass it was out there that said that, you know, almost all those games, uh, uh, Cooper Rush could have won. <sighs> Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> all right. If this isn't compelling enough. Let's just go through the numbers. I, I know, I know. Well, he don't pass the eye test. All right, let's just look at this real quick. Let's go through the list, okay? Completion percentage. There you have Dak Prescott. Number two. Total yards. Dak Prescott. Number three. TDs. 36. Dak Prescott, TD percentage, second, Dak Prescott, interceptions, well, he's tied with a whole bunch of other mother humpers at uh, between 16 and 21 with only nine, success rate, number two, if you are in the top tier of all these matrixes. If you're, if you're I mean, seriously, you're third in yardage, you're, o you're, you're only 100 yards behind leading the NFL, and your ass did not play in like seven games in the fourth quarter. That's almost a game and three quarters of time you did not spend on the field that you could have been playing. You know, because some of these guys are playing in garbage time, chasing other teams, trying to catch up that are padding their stats. And when you think about how the Cowboys offense was through the San Francisco game until we had the bye week and we changed shit up, dudes, dudes, I don't know how you can't look at that and say he's got four more touchdown passes than anybody else. Four more than anybody else. I, I I don't it's a mess and then I don't understand how you cannot put it. you've got the second most wins in the NFL. Second most. You have four more T D passes than anybody else.
You are in the top five in every single matrix. You have made an incredible play that may be one of the plays of the year where you should have been sacked in the end zone and you find your receiver for a Dallas Cowboys second all-time longest touchdown pass play. You let him down on the field in a game that mattered to take the lead against the Lions, which helped you get the number two seed. You've been five and one in your division owning that thing. You came from three games behind, which the team that everybody thought was a generational team and the best built team that automatically was going to get the number one seed and breeze through to a blowout win in the Super Bowl. And you did this not with a Zeke Elliott, who was a young man with a great running attack, not with the Philadelphia Eagles offensive line that was great or the Detroit Lions or any of these other teams, a team that literally had turnstiles with players. Zach Martin missed two games. Biotis missed a couple of games. Tyler Smith didn't even start the season until week number three. Tyra Smith, well, he always misses like three or four games minimum. And Terrence Steele coming back from an ACL. You did all of this. All of this. Where you're not turning over the ball like crazy. If this was Josh Allen... If this was Josh Allen's numbers, because even last week they were still talking about Josh Allen should still be in the conversation, and here it was last night, he started the game with two interceptions and a third one that was actually tipped off a helmet that should have been an interception too. If this was Josh Allen or Justin Herbert or any of those guys, it would be he's a shoe in But because you're Dak Prescott with America's team, no. Last night, one of those interceptions. Here's where it's crazy. That interception last night was a tip pass at the line. Three of the interceptions of the nine were against San Francisco 49ers. So that tells you through 15 games, five interceptions total. Five interceptions. If he's not the NFL MVP, I don't know. I'm sorry. No disrespect to Lamar Jackson. And we can do a comparison of Lamar Jackson's numbers if you guys like. But that was an incredible game by an incredible quarterback, a guy I have always believed in. Now, there's people that literally sitting here listening to people, reading the comments during the live stream. I wish I could have streamed the whole game all the way through, but my battery died, you know, from being there all day long and stuff. And it, the battery charger wasn't charging as fast as it was going down, but it's all good. We got plenty of content. I got a lot of clips and stuff and shout out to everybody who was at the tailgate. I'll, I'll be uh, taking some of the videotapes and, and everything. And if you're at the tailgate and took pictures, email them to me because I want to put them all in a, a giant collage uh, for everybody because we had a ball. Oh, my God, we had the ball. And it feels good to do what they told us they couldn't do. I salute the Dallas Cowboys and couldn't be happier for them. Whew. We got a lot of work to do today. One, I got up this morning, started cleaning all the dishes from the tailgate and stuff, but I still have all the grills and all that stuff or all my truck and all the coolers that need to be cleaned. Y'all have no idea how much goes into doing that. But I'm going to say every penny, every minute, Every second, every aching joint that I have was well worth it to hang with you guys. And I am so honored and so grateful to do that. Shout out to Terrence Parsons, who came by, Micah Parsons' dad, and hung out with us with his brothers. That was an honor. It was, yeah, Terrence, it was an honor that Terrence, uh, you know, I'm, I'm running around doing this, that, and the other, and all. And uh, I hear him. Terrence said, hey, Mark, I need a picture with you. What, 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 what? I'm a nobody. 
You want a picture with, wait, wait, you want to keep a picture of this old fat ass? Okay. It was a good day. I just haven't, now I haven't heard any of this this morning. This is get up this morning. I always like to listen and hear what they have to say. So I'm watching this for the first time myself. And I'm curious what they have to say about my team. And Rex, the Cowboys, it's all sitting there for them as the two seed in the NFC. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. This is the best chance at a Super Bowl that, that this franchise has had in years. Mm -hmm. And why? Because you're, you're hosting playoff games, mm -hmm. at least two playoff games if you keep winning. And that's why that win over Detroit is so monumental. They get to play at home. This team has won 16 straight games at home. Mm -hmm. And Dak Prescott, oh my God, is he playing unbelievable, especially at home. So to me, yeah, they're they're a real problem. So here's to us. Here's the AFC picture. Saturday and Sunday, Dolphins, Chiefs in Kansas City. They're expecting temperatures around zero. The Sunday NFC games, Mike McCarthy's Cowboys and the Packers. And then Matthew Stafford Can't in wait. Detroit. And I can hear Dan already chuckling. That, that, that is about as rich a storyline as we've seen in any playoff game in a really long time. We will have Eagles Bucks capping things off Monday night on ESPN and ABC. So let's dive deeply into all of this. Let's get a little bit more in depth yeah. into that. The Dallas Cowboys, like almost every team in the league, they're seeing, maybe besides Baltimore and San Francisco, the season's been up and down. Right, right? The moments they look great, moments we were ready to give up on them. At this moment, do they look like, aside from San Francisco, the best team in the NFC to you? Yeah, absolutely. They do. And they, they absolutely do. And, of course, I'm going to say Detroit also. Okay. But I think Dallas at home, one thing we talk about the ups and downs, yeah. they haven't had that at home. That's true. There's 16 straight wins at home. Mm -hmm. And this team is built to play at, at home. They're built to play with a lead. Mm -hmm. Dak Prescott's been almost perfect at home. So, to me, yeah, they're a major problem. They're they have been perfect Stanford at home. playing the house money Packers. And I say it that way because Green Bay is playing – this was a team that did not look like a playoff team midway through the season. As you point out, this is an, a young and ascending Jordan Love, who's maybe a year ahead of schedule on this. All those young players on the offense. But I've got a little birdie whispered in my ear. Dan thinks Green Bay is going to make this very, very tough for Dallas this weekend. Absolutely, because every oh that here we Dallas go. Shut up. Mainly on defense, Green Bay majors in. And that's going to be the real matchup that we're going to have to pay attention to in this game. If I Green Bay's offense, play action pass, motion, attack man coverage. They're going to motion the receiver to an extended bunch. Those three guys together, play action underneath. They want speed down the field. Now we're going to affect those second level defenders. We're going to get them with the play action and the tight end coming on the shallow cross. Jaden Reed, everybody, get ready to hear his name. This weekend, you heard it a little bit yesterday, national mm. television, that big in-breaking. That's how they get all those big explosive plays. Down in the red zone, you're going to get, again, a little bit of motion. Jordan Love, play action. We're trying to get people vertical, slip someone into the flat. If he's not there, look at Reed at the, uh, the um, line of scrimmage. Touchdown, beautiful job of winning versus man coverage. Greeny, th this is a football team offensively that is going to put Jordan Love under center. They're going to use a ton of motion. They're going to use a ton of play action pass. That is everything that Dallas struggles with defensively. Great defense, but they are going to challenge Dallas in every facet coming this weekend. You notice he didn't talk about the Green Bay Packers defense right. matching up against Dak Prescott. <laughs> right. That no is going yeah. to be a feeding frenzy for, yeah. for Dak and that also. <laughs> and I do think the pass rush of uh, the Cowboys could be a problem with the slow developing play action. As long as they don't get sucked in on those play action fakes, I think they can get to Jordan Love in those man-on-man um, -man situations and make those throws much more difficult. But Dak Prescott and CD Lamb will not be stopped against the Packers. Their defense is just not good. Swiss, they have Swiss they cheese. Have year after year, and they just never quite put it together. The, the last three months, CD Lamb, I think, has been the best offensive player in yeah. the league. I, I think if, if you take the first half of the season out, he would be the off right in the running for offensive player of the year. Here's the thing that scares you about the Cowboys, if, if you were one who was inclined to root for them, and certainly those of us who talk about them all the time. They don't usually handle prosperity well. Like, like it, is, it is the pressure. Can you describe uh, the Rex? You go in as the Packers. No one expected you to be there. You're young. Your future is ahead of you. 
You go in as Mike McCarthy and this Cowboys team. Now everything has been handed to you. You've got home field. Everyone's talking about, oh, this is finally to you. here. The first time Hand since the mid-90s. Yeah. That, that's a little different feel. How does that pressure, do you think, affect the Cowboys? Well, it's pressure, but you you got to embrace it. You're, you're sitting back there going, we are playing at home. Yeah. All you have to do is show up offensively. Yeah. And, and Mike McCarthy's got to be like, look, we're getting ready to tear this thing up. This team is built for us to get after, mm -hmm. all right? And why they don't play defense well, all right? Dak Prescott and company, are, I mean, should light up the scoreboard. Right. And then defend love, it's great. Yep, and when you, when the protection holds up and you're able to run that play action, you're in the run game, to me, the run game's key for Green Bay. Right. If they, if they end up taking that run away uh, from the Packers, that pass rush will light up Jordan Love and company. That's my opinion. All right, Dan, give me a quick final thought because I want to get to the Eagles here. Danny, go. You know, uh, many of us would be shocked if Dallas can slow down this run game because Green Bay is very good at it. Um, I would say this. The biggest question mark I have in the opposite matchup with this is Dallas's health offensive line-wise. Tyron Smith, Tyler Smith, how healthy are those guys? And then also, what's Stephon Gilmore's health? Because he came out of that football game yesterday. Hopefully not a big deal. But with the young speed and talent that Green Bay has on the perimeter, that's going to be something to pay attention to. All right, so while the Packers were earning their way in yesterday and the Cowboys were earning... All right, we're going to leave it right there because the Eagles, <laughs> that, 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 that's, all, that's all day long. I have got to watch the live stream of uh, Philly 500. Um, I wish I could sync up Philly's live stream with actually watching the game, but I don't think there's any way to get it synchronized because of the, you know, the compressed games without the ads and stuff like that. But I have to see him during that live stream. Oh my goodness. As always, good people, I appreciate you guys. And um, it's time to get focused in on the Green Bay Packers and playoffs. Whew. It feels good. Oh, and Ron Rivera was